So let's jump in and, uh, and get started. Uh, I think uh, Iran is still at the top of kind of people's, of my concerns. I think that what we're seeing right now is uh, increased visibility to what's going on in Iran in the American press, in Western press. So finally, it seems like the, the, the press has caught up with the situation. The regime is continuing to execute people, protesters. Uh, who are arrested, uh, you know, they have this tradition, I guess, in the Iranian theocracy uh, to hang their opponents from uh, cranes and to leave them out uh, dead, uh, hanging, so as to, uh, as a warning, I guess, to anybody else. That was done over the weekend with a young protester. Uh, the Iranians don't seem to care about condemnations or anything like that. Uh, they're just plowing ahead. The, the, the amazing thing is, and I think this is uh, inspiring, is that Iranian youth are not giving up. That is, the demonstrations continue in spite of the risk of being arrested and being, uh, being hanged, being murdered. The demonstrations continue. Uh, women and girls throughout Tehran are walking around without hijabs, without head covering. Uh, this is illegal. Uh, and they can be arrested for it, but they're doing it anyway. They're running around knocking the, the heads, the head uh, uh, wear of uh, of some of the mullahs or some of the, uh, the, the you know the the, the religionists. It, it, there is a real sense that people in Iran are, are just not going to give up. Uh, they're not. They're not going to. They're not going to just cower before uh, this regime. On the other hand. The regime doesn't seem like it's going to give up. Uh, any kind of weakness that this regime will show, they believe will just embolden uh, the, the, the protesters even more and, and risk real regime change in Iran. So they are sticking tough. We are starting to see uh, conflicts and, and disagreement among regime personalities. There's a conflict about whether the morality police has been disbanded or hasn't been disbanded. There's a conflict about whether the hijab is going to uh, the laws against HR are going to be sustained or not, uh, and uh, and that uh, you know that uh, that is not going away. That continues. Uh, that is uh, that uh, that conflict between the various elements within the Iranian regime uh, will continue. Uh, it and um, you know we'll see where it all pans out. Uh, at the end of the day. I think it's going to be very difficult for this regime to, to survive. I'll make a prediction that this regime will not survive. I, I don't know how long it's going to take to bring them down. I don't know if this is the end of it or if it's going to take a year or two or a month or two or, or whatever. It's hard to tell what the dynamics of something like this are and what kind of external spark will be needed to really bring the regime down completely. But I think all the elements are in place, uh, the, the Iranian population, particularly the young, are fed up. They've had it. Uh, I mean, I, I read a story over the weekend of where uh, parents are disowning their children because the parents are still committed to the regime and the children um, the children are rebelling against it. Uh, families are being torn apart. Uh, but they're not stopping. So this suggests that in spite of social pressure from the elders, the young people are not stopping. They're not giving up. They continue to fight, and there's a good chance that they will continue to fight. So uh, all the power to them, and, uh, you know, let's see, let's see. Let's hope that within the military, within even the Iranian National Guard, at some point the calculus will change to maybe it's not in our best interest to continue to support the regime as it is. Maybe we should start thinking about other options, and only when that happens, I think, will you get uh, uh, the real revolution. Somebody has, with weapons, has to be on the side of the protesters and has to actually push this regime um, uh, over. But, uh, you know, at this point, I think, I don't think it's reversible. And uh, it's partially the power of individualism, the power of people wanting to be free, the power of them seeing what life is like in the West, whether it's through the internet, whether it's, uh, and, and they use VPNs to get around whatever blockage there is, whether it's from traveling, they see what life is elsewhere. And they do not want the life that they have. They also see that 
the wealthy and the, the politically connected have their beach homes on the Caspian Sea uh, where they hold parties, where there are no hijabs, where there's alcohol, where there's no respect for the laws, and, and, and they're going, why only them? This should be society-wide. So again, I, I doubt this is reversible. This will continue, and the longer it continues, the more likely it is that the regime will indeed, will indeed fall. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.